Good morning, everybody, and welcome to 1983. You guys are familiar, the Ben Hogan Radial Irons. Now, I love golf. I love vintage golf. There are some clubs that I've been familiar with kind of my whole life, and it's hard for me to get terribly excited about them. They have a distinctive look, and I see these all the time used in pawn shops and pro shops, just all over, it seems like. And so I've collected a few throughout my years. Now, the Ben Hogan Radials, they, they're, they, I don't even know what radial means. Isn't that like a tire? A radial tire, more properly, a radial ply tire, is a particular design of vehicular tire. In this design, the cord plies are arranged at 90 degrees to the direction of travel. Or radially or radi radially from the center of the tire. Okay, so you look at the center of the sole, it's almost radially, radial. I think that's my annual, let's scratch the surface of science just once. It has a big sole and it's a blade, I mean, Looking at this thing, it's a Ben Hogan. I mean, they've always been well made. I've never had one of these fail. They always feel fine when I hit them. If you guys want some other close-ups of this club, some identifying features, we'll move over to the review table and have a closer look. Identifying features here, you can see Hogan in script right below this step down to the top line. Nice thin top line right there. And then we get this elephantitis sole right here, radial with the club number in red. This has seen better days, looking at it from the hosel side right here. Stepping around to the front here, you can see that prominent sole, nice thin step down top line. Looking at the face, no nonsense, very what you would expect. Look at this at a dress, absolutely exactly what you want to see that doesn't stick out here on this nine iron, obviously. And then we have this cosmetic crimp right here. I don't want to call it knurling, it's not crisscross diamond pattern there's none of that so little cosmetics right there do we see a pin pinned shaft oh yeah there is right here can you see that pin right there and then uh, there's a number right here on the ferrule and then we move to a hogan stepped shaft one of the things that hogan was famous for these lightweight shafts i can't read this so i can't tell you the flex and then there's an aftermarket grip on this so it does look beautiful, and I think we're ready to move out to the range and see how it feels. So this is a 9-iron. It looks like any other blade. The face is not as long as some modern blades. Looks good, though. Yeah, you can see the ball mark clearly right there. Maybe the tiniest bit skinny. That was a another skinny one. Feel great though. Good feedback. Taking it out onto the range, number one, it brings back memories. And that's kind of what this channel's about, right? It's about the excitement and passion for these clubs. Now, I have some backstory with the Ben Hogan radials. And when I went out to the range, you may have noticed I had some other clubs in the bag. One of them that I hit was this Ping I2 Plus. Okay, now this is cast and it makes a nice clack sound. It's a clacky duck here. As opposed to the radial, the radial sounded beautiful. Now that I've developed a more mature, maybe, <laughs> idea of what I'm expecting from a golf club, this isn't bad. But from my history, when I first started going to golfing ranges, driving ranges with my buddies in the 90s, this was something that I found in a bin at a thrift store. It was just like, oh, here, let's grab one. I need a six iron. This says six on the bottom. This one's the nine, but I had a six iron. And uh, I grabbed a Ping Zing. I think it was a nine iron. I grabbed some other clubs. The Ping Zing stood out to me as a brand new beginner golfer is something that was on my side and easy to hit. Whereas this was just kind of another eh, kind of a club. And to me, it looked like 
it was just dropped on the pavement and it just kind of you know how in cartoons like something an anvil will fall on somebody's head and a little bump goes bloop, 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 bloop. that's what it looked. looked like somebody dropped this and it's kind of that little bump there so I was never that excited about it but when I went out on the range it brought back some fun memories and I appreciate this for what it is now it sounds very good in my humble opinion compared to something like this although I have to admit I do appreciate the sound of these cast steel ping irons so for me uh, uh not super excited about it but there's some nostalgia with these hogan radials i still just don't see them as like a premium blade that i really desire but i imagine everybody's different out there turf interaction not a new idea i think i've read adverts from the 40s or 30s even where they designed brassies with turf interaction in mind so it's not a new idea in the 80s. It's not a new idea now. You go read some major manufacturers' blurbs on their websites about turf interaction. It's a it's, Clubs will always interact with turf. So let me know your thoughts about the Hogan Radial 1983. Is it something you played? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you, are you like me, just <laughs> kind of not too excited about it? But it is part of the Hogan history here. If you would like to support this channel, you can visit my Amazon shop in the links in the description below. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. That all comes back to help this channel. Please subscribe, hit that bell icon if you would like email notifications when I upload a video. Thank you so much for watching. I am The Vintage Golfer.